Hello and welcome to Sunset Seekers. We are so very honored that you stopped by to check out this video. I recently had a vendor that contacted me about doing a review on one of their products. So this video is going to be a review of the Ruko F11 Gem 2 drone. Now I will tell you in advance that this will be a favorable review. I have had an opportunity to look the drone over and I think that it's a pretty good value for its price point of around $500. Now if you stick around to the end of the video, I will tell you how you can get a discount on this drone. But first things first, let's see what comes in the box. Inside the box, you'll find a pretty good quality plastic zip bag, and uh, out of that comes this case. Now, look at this case. This is a really good quality case. It's got a wonderful carrying handle. The zipper is really good quality. Uh, I just there's some. I just love this case. It, it's really really good quality. Opening it up reveals a little piece of foam there that covers up everything, the contents that are inside, and it does come with a spare battery here, which that is an excellent plus. Uh, all in all, you have 56 uh, minutes of flight time. Here is the controller, which uh, we will cover that in a little bit greater detail later on in the video. Pulling the drone out here, and this is the front of the drone. Now what you're actually looking at is a cap that covers the camera, and we'll, uh, we'll show you what that camera looks like here later on in the video. Now this drone feels really solid. It's got a really good build quality to it. Very impressive. Does come with some extra blades, a full set. And the instruction manuals are actually very, very useful. I was really impressed with what you find inside of these manuals. There are two charging cables inside, one for each battery. Okay, so here are all the items unboxed. And overall, this is a very impressive little drone. I really like the way this drone handles, especially in manual flight mode, and I'll demonstrate that towards the end of this video, but it has a few other flight modes that work pretty well also. Probably my favorite of these is a flight mode called GPS Follow. Now this will be a short video, this won't be a video where I cover every little function of the drone in great detail, but I do plan to focus on those things that I think are the best things that this drone has to offer. I also won't show the process of calibrating the drone because quite frankly, this drone is very similar to every other drone out there in the way that it is calibrated for flight, and the instruction manuals actually do a really good job of illustrating how to get this drone ready for flight, so my focus will be on showing you a lot of flight recorded video to give you an idea of what this drone is capable of. But again, this drone does have some wonderful strengths, and those are the things that I'm going to cover in more detail. So here are the main things that will be covered in this video. We'll talk about what's in the box, image follow mode, the route rules mode, orbit mode, my favorite thing about this drone which is the GPS follow mode, manual flight mode, and also the return to home function. Now here's the full set of blades that I was talking about earlier. They are directional. It is a full set again. It comes with a little Allen wrench and also some extra screws for installing them. Now here are the most important extras that come in the box. The spare battery, the spare set of blades, and the controller. And here is the 4K camera on the two-axis gimbal located on the front of the drone. Down below and to the left on the countertop you can see the protective cap that has been removed. Here's the SD card slot that will accommodate uh, up to 128 gig SD card. It's uh, towards the front of the drone close to the camera. And here's the controller. It's nice and compact when it's folded up so it fits well in the case. And here it is completely unfolded with the antennas up and ready for a phone to be installed. Now I have a Samsung Galaxy S10 which is a pretty big phone and I was a little concerned that it wouldn't fit very securely in the cradle but here it is installed without a case and uh, I did some testing on it, wiggled it around and it fits very secure in the cradle. Later I tried it with my phone case installed as you can see here and it still fit really well in the cradle. Now once you download the app to your phone this is what you'll see. This is the main screen and it's very reminiscent of the DJI products that I've used in the past so it wasn't much of a learning curve for me and this is a very similar layout to what you'll find on most drones that are on the market. Now pressing this key on your screen will bring up the main functions that we're going to focus on for the rest of this video. 
Now there are some gimmicky things here that work okay as far as I can tell. You can use hand gestures to either take a photo or start recording video. There is a zoom function that works okay. You can put music in your recording, use VR goggles. There's a lens angle function as well as a filter, but my focus is going to be on the flight modes which in my view are the best things that this drone has to offer. I took my drone out to the local high school to test out the flight modes and once I got the drone calibrated and in the air, the first thing that I tried out was the image follow mode. The image follow mode is actuated here on the app and once you set your altitude and highlight the object that you want the drone to follow, then the drone stays in a stationary hover while following the object that you selected. In this case, I set my drone to hover at about 20 feet and outline my truck as the object. Now this isn't my favorite function, but it does work relatively well at following your object. But as you can see here, sometimes it seems to take a little while to kind of catch up to the object. Now the next thing that I tested out was the route rules flight mode, which is a, it's pretty neat. It's where you select some waypoints, which I'm doing right here. And once you have those waypoints selected and you hit start, then your drone follows that route. You want to make sure to get your drone to the right altitude, which I'm doing here. You hit go and then you hit the slider and then your drone starts to follow that route. Then you can toggle between the actual footage that the camera is taking and then you can go back to where you're actually at on your route like this. Now I'm going to toggle back to show you the footage that it's taking. And this right here is what it looks like when the drone is following that route. The next function that I tested was the orbit mode or point of interest mode as it's called in the manual. This mode functions exactly opposite of the way the image follow mode works. With image follow, the drone stays stationary and follows the object that you select. With orbit mode, you select the object that you want to be your focus, get the drone right over the object, in this case I use my truck again, select these two buttons on your controller, which are the video record button and the camera button. Once doing that, you then set the radius and exact altitude by flying away from your object and then again press your video and camera buttons to begin the orbit. Now the orbit does take several minutes to fly around your object so you may need to speed this footage up with your video editing software but all in all it works pretty good. I find this to be a much more useful flight mode than the image follow. Now on to one of my favorite things about this drone, which is the GPS follow mode. The GPS follow mode is actuated here on the app, and this basically enables the drone to follow your cell phone and controller. Once the function has been initiated, the drone can follow the smartphone wherever it goes. Now you do need a pretty good Wi-Fi connection to the controller, but the drone will follow within 10 to 100 meters according to the manual, and will stay with your smartphone unless you exceed the top speed of the drone, which is around 30 miles per hour. All in all, I find this flight mode to work rather well and I was impressed with how stable the drone was and just how well it kept up with me as I accelerated. But I did eventually exceed the limits of the GPS follow mode. I lost the signal somehow, maybe I was just going a little bit too fast, but you can see where the drone stops falling right about here.
I discover that I've lost my drone at this point, and so I turn around to retrieve it, and as I'm making my way back, this bird shows up on the scene and does not appreciate the presence of my drone at all. I also noticed at this point that I was a little closer to the power lines than I would like to be, so I increased my altitude a little and headed back the other direction to avoid the hostile wildlife. The drone follows me perfectly this time as I make my way up to a good place to test out the manual flight mode. I must say that I enjoy flying this drone in manual flight mode more than anything else. The drone handles very well. It actually has three different speed modes as outlined in the manual. It has a camera mode which is supposed to enhance the drone's stability while taking video footage or pictures. It has a sport mode that enables it to respond more quickly to controls and fly a little bit faster. And then it has a normal mode. I can't honestly say that I noticed much difference between the speed modes and during my initial testing of the drone, I kept it in normal mode and all the video footage that you see in this video was taken in normal mode. Now here's some more footage back at the local high school stadium and I really think that the manual flight mode is one of the major strengths of this drone. I was really impressed with how well the drone handled in moderate winds on this day. There were gusts of up to 20 miles per hour at certain times and the drone handled remarkably well. I've included a couple of minutes of video here to showcase the drone's stability. I've flown a DJI Mavic Pro 2 for a couple of years now and it's a drone that has remarkable capabilities. A 4K image quality that is truly amazing. It's a drone that has earned its good reputation in the industry. Now, the Ruko F11 doesn't quite measure up to the Mavic Pro. It doesn't handle as well and the image quality isn't on par with the Mavic, but the Mavic Pro is a $2,000 drone. You can find the Ruko F11 for under $300. So overall, I would say that the F11 is a very good value. Now, the comparison to the Mavic Pro may not be a fair comparison, but the Mavic is the only other drone I've ever owned and had experience with. I'm not claiming to be a drone expert in this video. I'm just giving my honest opinion. Someone sent me a free drone, asked me to do a review, and I said, sure, I'll test it out and make a video for you. And honestly, I was not expecting much of the Ruko drone. I half expected for this drone to be a cheap knockoff in every way, but that's just not what arrived on my doorstep. In fact, the F11 exceeded my expectations in just about every way except for the image quality, which at times doesn't appear to be a full 4K image. There's a little bit of fuzziness on the periphery of the image, but as you can see from the footage, it's not bad. In fact, I think that the footage speaks for itself. Now, I've done a little bit of color grading with my editing software to make some of the colors a bit more vibrant, but I do the same thing with the footage from my Mavic Pro as well. Last but not least, I want to mention the return to home function, which seemed a little slower than I'm used to, but worked without fail during my testing. The drone did not land with pinpoint accuracy, but it stayed within three or four feet of the original home point, which is very impressive for a drone in this price point. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you found this information to be helpful. I think that the Ruko F11 Gem 2 is a good value. It's a very solid drone for this price point and one that I hope you'll give a try. If you're interested in purchasing this drone, you can find a really good discount if you follow the link in the description below. You can find this drone for less than $300 depending on the time of your purchase and I promise you that it's very unlikely that you'll find it for less than you can here. If you're interested specifically in the F11, then follow the first link that you find in the description and that will take you to a discounted price for the drone. If you're interested in checking out some of the other good quality products that Ruko has to offer, then follow the second link to the main page on the website. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks again for watching.